I'm going to show you something here in Matthew chapter 3. had a brother show me this recently here. Um, pretty good. On this whole, the, one of the big things that the Trinitarian people, the pagans, will, will use to, to prove there are three separate gods, essentially, they'll say, well, what about when Jesus was baptized? That proves that there are three separate you know, persons, even though that term is never used in the Bible. And that, you know, somehow they're not three separate gods. They're just one God, but they're three separate persons. Weird. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And I have taught for years and years and years. This isn't something I just recently started teaching to get attention or some kind of a thing. Um, I've been teaching for years that the Godhead consists of Jesus, the body, God, the soul, the you know, the God, the Father, the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit. Three parts of one being. I've been teaching that thing for many, many, many years. I've mistakenly used the term Trinity. I publicly repent of that. I'm sorry. I was wrong to use that. And I'm probably even said persons, uh, meaning the three different parts of the one being. And again, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been saying that. I was picking up things from what I was hearing from teachers that I was hearing that they picked it up from false sources themselves. But the, here's the whole thing. This is one of the key scriptures that these Trinitarian pagans will use. They'll say, well, see, three separate persons here speaking. And how dare you say that God the Father is the soul? You can't prove that. Uh, well, being lost, they can't understand the scriptures. Look what we see here. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We'll just do a little word study here, which this brother did. And he said, what about the thing of in whom I am well pleased? Look at this. Matthew chapter 12. I'll show you a good tie in here. Matthew chapter 12, verse 14 through 18. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. And when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. By the way, the Pharisees wanted to destroy Jesus because he was saying that he was God the Father. He was using the title, I Am. That's why they hated him. Um, where am I at here? Verse 16, And charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Isaiah the prophet there is a reference back to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21, where the Old Testament prophecy is, is given that it's going to say here in the next verse, verse 18, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. Hmm. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. The Father, speaking from heaven, says, My beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Here it says, uh, In whom my soul is well pleased. Is God the Father the soul? Yes, absolutely. God the Father is the soul. Right there is proof of it. If you don't believe that, well then you have a problem with this book. It's not me that you have a problem with, really. You have a problem with this. You better repent of that. 